Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Romney has called from Leon C. Romney, you're not only not particularly bothered by this letter, you think more of this should happen? Absolutely, Sheila, yes. I think the, um, the universities have had uh, far long enough to have it their own way without being questioned. What with their money professors there, there's about 350, I understand, I'm not sure if that's exactly right, being paid to peddle their opinions by the EU. And I think someone does need to actually write in and say what, what's going on there. I mean, you say it's supposed to be a place of, of discussion and talk. The universities are becoming well known for the exact opposite of that lately. Well, you're 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 putting you're lumping together an awful lot of issues there into one basket, and they don't belong in the same basket, I don't think, Romney. Oh, but it was all what you just said. No, uh, let, let, let's all right. Let's separate them. Let's separate them out. Go on then. The students, the business of not letting people speak is a student issue, not a university issue, if you see what I mean. It's the student bodies who say yes or no to who comes to speak. Now, Joe Johnson has said to universities, you must intervene on that and you must, you must be open to a, a broad range of talkers. So it's the students really, not the universities, if you see what I mean, if you, not, not the university authorities making those decisions. On yeah, the, question, on the yeah. question of what people are being taught, the university, as long as it's within the law, because of course if they're teaching radicalization or teaching violence or you know flouting the law in, in lectures, that's a whole other thing. And as Tom Brooks said, there is there is scrutiny of universities. But universities and the, the lecturers and professors who teach at them and, and help to develop the minds and the intellects of the people at these universities and the debating skills of the people at these universities they, they, they don't need the kind of oversight that has a government whip uh, asking for lists of names. Do you really want that? Yes, I think so, doesn't it? I mean, just being dramatic and calling it McCarthyized, I mean, it's just asking for some names so they know what's going on. Why not? It's, no, it's not just asking for names. It's asking who is teaching what and how this yeah. individual... Well, I'm sorry, but that's not... That isn't what scrutiny of universities is about. Yeah, but, but people need to know universities can't be a law unto themselves. They're not a law unto themselves. Above, above people like myself who don't know what's going on there, other than what I get through perhaps my grandchildren who go there. Um, no, but they're you know, not. So but Romney, they're not a law unto themselves. There is scrutiny of universities, but not. Well, I know but there not. Are, you can teach this idea, but not that idea. If if an idea is within the law then back off is what I say yeah. to government ministers wading in or government whips wading in. Yeah, but look, Sheila, you know yourself that if you've got a view yourself uh, and it comes across from even you as a presenter, I mean, I listen to all the presenters on the LBC yeah. and you know their view and how they steer the conversations and it doesn't matter how hard they try, we all do it, we've all got our own view and it comes across and it does with lecturers. I've, and I've heard it, and I've had my kids tell me that. I know, but that's okay. That's okay. They're not. Do you know the, the only people well, who can't? Right. No, it's <laughs> okay because the only people who can't give their view are is the Queen and BBC presenters and journalists. There you go. The, the rest of us actually are free to say what we like. I'll say what you like, but when you're teaching, and if you get teachers, and if you get more teachers teaching in the same vein, then you're going to start to be brainwashed. Yeah, but this is university, not school. This is university. This is a place where, if you know, if, if you've got a professor in front of you, and he or she is saying, right, well, here's my take on Brexit, and here's why I think it, but here are some other thoughts that we can discuss today. Uh, I suggest you read X. I suggest you read Y. You can come back and challenge me. We can have a great old debate. If that person just stood in that lecture theatre and said, well, here's what uh, some people think. Here's what other people think. Here's a dry, uh, you know, essay on the possibility of no deal. Thank you for coming, everybody. Bye-bye. That's not what university lecturers are, are meant to do. They're meant to challenge and encourage and spark debate in, oh, the, minds, in the minds of their students. You don't and do I'm that sure by being... Do. But yeah. they will do it with a start. Everyone, most people do it if they've got a view themselves. 
however fair they're trying to be, you always know they're slant. No, but you can. But they I can. Know they, yours. they can. They can give. Well, that's because I don't hide it, do I? On 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 the EU, I, I voted Remain, and I would revoke. I would vote Remain again and again. But at universities, they don't have to hide it. They can. I, I had long conversations with one of my university professors. He was a Spanish man from Catalonia, and we had a long conversation about left wing politics because he was all those years ago, thirty years ago now. Um, he was talking about the value of left wing politics for his nation and for Catalonia. And at the time, my home city, Liverpool, was being ruined by extreme left wing politics. So I remember he and I having a good old ding dong about it, and we both knew each other's view. I wasn't in any danger. I was learning how to debate with a man with a great brain. Oh, yes. I mean, I do agree with everything you're saying in that respect, but I still do believe um, it is. I mean, with all these universities, it's just funny how they all do treat be very, very left-wing orientated. <laughs> They're really not. They're really not. Uh, Romney, thank you for your call anyway. Uh, you've obviously got concerns about it and think more scrutiny of universities and what they teach is necessary. Thank you for your call. Romney in Leon C. Peter in Manchester, hello. Hi there. So, um, yeah, thanks for, for allowing me on the call. Mm -hmm. I think uh, very briefly, I think my view is very aligned to yours, which is that nobody should be pushed or forced in any particular direction. But I think transparency is equally as important. And actually, the bigger issue right now isn't the right pushing an agenda. It's the left. And if you look at the university campus situation uh, all over the world, including in the UK, you've got the likes of Antifa, who are pushing a very aggressive agenda and violent. And I think that's probably more worthy of focus than focusing on a, a whip that's decided to ask a few questions that may be slightly uncomfortable. Uh, if there was uh, some kind of dictatorship going on, I completely understand your point of view, but it's not a bad thing to ask, what exactly is it our students are being taught? Um, what exactly is it they're being taught in terms of the facts as well as the, the view? And, and as uh, with your last caller, I think there is an overwhelming push from the left and the liberal left to gag the right and and it's a bit of a shame um you may deny what's, that no, no, what's, you may what's your evidence case, for this but, what's but, your, it, but, very, but i'm curious it's about overwhelming to, to uh, a lot of people on social media i'm curious who, as to what your evidence to this is about strictly linked to universities you see plenty of, um, of, of footage unfortunately not from the bbc or the mainstream media in the west but if you venture outside of the mainstream media and go and find sources of information that you know to be fact-based from reputable reporters who've got a long career in, in reporting but may not necessarily be subscribing to being part of the establishment, you end up with a lot of information that really does counterbalance the, the narrative that's going on at the moment. Now, I'm not particularly left or right, and I'm not particularly for staying or leaving the EU, but at the moment I certainly don't get the impression we're getting a balanced view from the media at large, and, um, and, and what, I, I do agree with a lot of the things but, the last caller actually said. But what, what specifically, well, I thought you agreed with me, because I vehemently disagreed with him. Oh, no, Which I of agree, us do you agree I with? I agree with you about the fact that nobody should be scrutinised to the point of being uncomfortable and feel they have to change their narrative. No, they shouldn't. We do want, I think, as parents throughout the nation, a more balanced view, not just a socialist view, not just based upon the minority all the time. We want to get back to some kind of balance. And I don't think anybody's particularly, any normal person is pushing too far to the left or to the right. But at the moment, it doesn't feel like that. And it hasn't done for a long time since being politically correct came in in the 90s. I think we've all got a bit fed up with it, to be quite frank. And there does appear to be uh, much more momentum from universities who, by the way, have an agenda. They're getting a lot of income from foreign students and they want to keep that income. And British students. Really understandable. And British students. Yeah, they do get a lot of money from British students, and we don't really want to venture into the student loan debate. That's well, well, I was about for. to, because I was about to say that... I thought you might. Well, only, <laughs> only because in my day at university, it was, it was paid for by the state. Mine was paid for by the state. Um, but now, it, it, there's even more of an argument for the, for, for the government keeping its nose out, because the students and their families are paying nine grand a year, thank you very much, to, oh, to, to way, be educated. I totally agree with you on that front, but we are living in a completely different demographic right now. The balance has changed massively. We have a huge amount of immigration. We've got limited inf infrastructure. We've got a budget that was blown completely by the previous Labour Party, and left us bankrupt, lest, lest we never forget that. And, and of course, we need to balance the books. And 
there is a lot of pain out there right now. People are living in very difficult circumstances. Students are being charged because the universities can't afford uh, to, to fund their education. And unfortunately, the government can't afford it either. If the government could afford it, we wouldn't have a huge deficit. Well, I, I, you know, you, you didn't really deliver me any proof that the left are somehow rampantly overtaking our universities. Um, I, I didn't hear any proof from you there. I heard opinion from you on it, Peter, but no proof. But thank you for your call, Peter. In the end, somewhere between me and Romney, uh, my first caller. Keep your calls coming on this. There are loads of you calling on this question of whether Chris Heaton-Harris, the MP for Daventry, a junior whip, um, uh, was within his rights to write to uh, the vice-chancellors of all the universities and uh, ask what they are teaching about Brexit and who is teaching what about Brexit. Is that an intrusion too far? Matthew in Hounslow, is it? Yes, it is, yes. You're a student yourself at the moment? I am, yes. I'm a student at the University of London. Um, I'm studying politics and international relations. Um, and I think, first of all, it's prudent to say I did vote Remain. Um, however, I'm, I'm in my first year, and my personal experience so far has been... I've experienced a lot of bias, a lot of sort of specific attacks on uh, leading Brexiteers, such as Boris Johnson, who, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the the, the statements coming from uh, the professional is not always professional in itself and doesn't particularly have any relevance at all to the content in which we're learning. And I think, you know, although I would say from an academic standpoint, things have been um, relatively balanced. I, I think there are, there are serious issues like that. Uh, and, you know, also, for example, um, every single article that we have been given has come from The Guardian. There has been no balance. Uh, from, and, you know, and this is from, uh, when you say articles you've been given, you know, you're a university student, every article in the world is out there at your fingertips if you want it to, see, to seek yeah, it out. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're, you're a grown-up now, Matthew. You're not a school student whose teacher gives you everything you read. Absolutely, but, you know, and as I, I mean, I personally, I read The Guardian, The Economist, The Times, um, I, I try and get a broad spectrum, and of course it's our responsibility to get out there. But, for example, the tutor specifically puts uh, reading material each week um, on the uh, internet platform, and it is from the same paper every single week. Now, Have you challenged that, him or her on that? Well, I think... To be honest, I, I've not felt comfortable to do so because there is very much... Uh, I mean, this is only my third week at university. Uh, and okay. of course, You've got to find your feet you know, first, haven't you? Yeah, and of, of, of course you have this feeling that, you know, I don't want to start challenging the, the, the lecturer. And, you know, I mean, the thing is to say is that I don't necessarily disagree with what's being said. Um, however, But others might. I think others might, and I think the issue is is that, for example, there are um, a lot of international students who don't necessarily they have they have very recently come to the country. You know, I've sat next to them; they're not particularly well read on the subject, uh, and they're very much being fed a very specific line of thought. Which which, which subject know, do you mean when you say on the subject? British politics specifically, so we're, we're specifically looking into Brexit. So, of course, we've looked at things like Article 50, which, you know, uh, is, is very short and specific and, uh, as we've seen in politics, can be read in many different ways. But, you know, in terms of uh, more academic opinions, it has very much been from one spectrum. Uh, and, and I think, as I say, particularly putting, you know, this endless stream of uh, very one-way satire on, 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 on the projector is, is one, uh, sort of inappropriate. And, and two, it's just feeding into that, that mentality, which, as I say, I don't think is productive. Well, this one lecturer, you're three weeks in. What I would say to you, Matthew, is do challenge the lecturer. And, and I don't mean it in a way where you're chiding them, but just say, when are we going to hear about... Uh, you know, a different approach. When are we? And, and it may be that it's coming. I don't know. I don't know the syllabus. You know, but I'm not about to write a letter to uh, the lecturer and ask him or her to no, reveal I, what his I, colleagues I, are teaching. You know. And absolutely. And I'm very much in the agreement. I don't. I, I think uh, Chris Harris's proposal is completely outrageous, and I think that it is utterly inappropriate to start naming specific lecturers. However, I think 
no, if, if universities are providing a balanced, open um, uh, academic syllabus and discussion, uh, then they should be what, what's what's the worry of, of sort of presenting what's Yeah, but that, that's, at, that's at recruitment level, isn't it? There was a survey done, I think, by the Adam Smith Institute that looked at how left-wing or not our universities were and, and, and the, it pointed to recruitment being the issue rather than, uh, you know, going in and getting names of who's teaching what and how. I just think it's the wrong way in. If, if you're going to address how you scrutinise universities, how you scrutinise the balance that they achieve, either between the lecturers and the students or across the whole piece, then that's, that, that's a very different thing from asking for lists of names and syllabuses it seems to me and james is called from romford hi james hi uh, yeah um i don't know about anyone else but i'm getting absolutely sick to the back teeth of uh these bleeding art liberals like lord dubs who are misleading the public about what's really going on here they are acting as a magnet drawing these people in and they've got the backing of the eu and, um, you know, whether you're talking about actual refugees or economic migrants or opportunities, it doesn't really appear to make that much of a difference. One bad apple will, you know, do the whole barrel. I mean, <coughs> what happens is you, no matter how many good refugees that you have in your country who, who do not intend to, like, break the law, who don't intend to go around burning cars, etc., you will inevitably get mixed up with the good. Those whose sole purpose in coming to your nation in the first place is to raise chaos start criminal syndicates and form sex gangs like we see in Rotherham. And uh, because you have an unassimilated group of people that has no significant national loyalty, no significant cultural loyalty, but have been displaced, uh, they're, they're socially alienated and they're right for the picking when it comes to radicalisation. OK, and, and so you, you would go even further than the government goes and not allow a single one more in? From either either from Calais or or even on a even on a company children in Europe. Do you know why? Do you know why? One because it's the law. What's okay? the, what's yeah, the law? Forgetting that the, the law is that you go and stop in the first country if you're an asylum seeker. Yeah, yeah, okay. You reach, and we are far from where they've come from. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is we've got our, our NHS is breaking at the seams. Our police have dried up. We've got no houses. We, we, we've got crime statistics coming out the other day. Everything's gone up. Oh, let's let some more in. Lovely. Um, so you, so you right, would... What about English people? All right. You, so, so you would prefer it if the 3,000 figure that Alf Dubs and his colleagues want of children brought here and the 20,000 children and families uh, from the Middle East, from camps in the Middle East, um, uh, largely Syrians but not exclusively, you would want none of them to be given legal passage show, show into this country. Show me the children. Show me the children. Please, someone show me because I'll tell you what, they're fighting age men. OK? And, when, and when, they, when they do finally let them in and they get them on the coaches, they black all the windows out so we can't see them. Funny, that, isn't it? No, well, the, there are children. I mean, I, I know what you're referring to, anything. James. No, but, well, they I... show them on the BBC. Well, James... The ones we see, the ones we see, <laughs> with all fairness to you, <laughs> the ones we see and the ones I see are fighting age men, OK? What about the families and, from Syria who are in, in refugee see camps? Any families from Syria. Well, no, no... You know, <laughs> If they are legitimate well, families from Syria, James, I mean, women James, and children, James, women and children, if I tell, then let them in. If I tell you that I do and that I have, will you believe me, or, or do you think I'm lying as well? No, 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 don't get, don't get twisted. I'm not calling. I'm not getting. Lying, no, I'm not I, getting I, twisted. I, I, I genuinely, it's a genuine question. I have seen countless stories from across the UK of families who have come from those refugee camps in Syria, in Lebanon, uh, in, not, not Syria, in Lebanon and Jordan, but Syrian families who've come to different parts of the UK, a long way away from where you are and where I am, up in Scotland, in parts of Northern Ireland, in all the countries and cities of the UK, young Syrian families who've uh, been taken, you know rescued essentially from a life in a refugee camp and and they've got a new life here i've seen them i've read their stories i've seen those families i've seen the reports it, they exist they're not all adults who are here to do you harm can you uh, hear my violin well, so so just to be clear your initial complaint was that they're all adults and you don't want any of them coming in now you're saying you don't care about children listen listen i i have give to charity for, for decades, okay. No, I'm not. I'm not saying you don't. Money, I'm, I'm not saying you don't. No say for years, for years and uh, years yeah. and years. We can't help the world's children. Yeah. We can't do it. 
We have to help them where they are. We have to help out their countries, build their countries up. Yeah. Stop the uh, red tape and the and the and the uh, protection things that's going on in the countries that where the problem is. Yeah, but when just bring everyone here, no, we're not, not the answer. No, I know, I know. We're, we're not bringing everyone here. And, and uh, no, Lord, we are. Have you no, heard we're of the not. We're not. Lord Dubs, who have you, you heard of the clergy plan? Have you heard of the clergy plan? No. I'll rest my case. Come on. I think we've got a bit of a Google moment there. Must look that one up. Clergy plan. Oh, dear. Owen Jones uh, spoke to us a few moments ago. Uh, some of you not impressed with uh, his contribution. Just another example of the double standards of the left. No doubt had it been said by a Tory, Owen Jones would be demanding a police investigation. Uh, the man is a homophobe. Not Owen Jones. The man is a homophobe has been caught out and has only resigned from the committee to try to save himself, says Jim in northwest London. Alfie despairs. He says, Sheila, what has happened to the people of this country? My God, everyone is a snowflake. Everyone is offended by everything. Sticks and stones. Just grow up. Let's hope we never have to go to war. If anyone gets upset with name-calling, I really do not recognise this country anymore, says Alfie. Uh, Ruben's called from Thanet. Hi, Ruben. Hi, Sheila. I just think it's blatant hypocrisy on the Liberal left end. Could you imagine the uproar from the Liberals if Nigel Farage, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Boris Johnson said the comments that this chap has said and he's almost being given a free pass because he's young. He said it before he was in politics and he's uh, pretty liberal. And uh, when Donald Trump, the comments he made about women, also disgusting comments, he made before he was in politics, but you people were marching in the streets, demanding him be booted out of the Republican primaries and all of that. Yet this Labour politician isn't being given the same treatment. It's just blatant hypocrisy. It, well, th does the fact that he has apologised, said he was utterly wrong to use that language, said he completely disassociates himself from them, does that make a difference? Because Donald Trump hasn't done that, has he? No, he hasn't apologised per se. At However, all. No, not per se. He hasn't apologised at all. He doubled down on it and said, come on, relax, it's just a bit of fun. No, I'm not saying... I despair over both comments that both men have made. Granted, uh, Jared has apologised, but it's almost seen... If a Tory MP had done the same and still apologised... Uh, it's, uh, the liberal left aren't that forgiving, although they try to uh, perceive themselves as tolerant beings, but they're all tolerant until you disagree with them. Can you compare the Donald Trump thing to uh, Jared Amara's words? Because with Donald Trump, I mean, he was talking about sexually molesting a woman. He was talking about uh, well, a sexual attack, wasn't he? That is what he was talking about. However, they're both... Well, he, he was talking about it. He was talking about having done it and relishing doing it. It's very well, different. Jared, very different things. Well, well Jared, ha there is proof that Jared has said these things. And yes, I know. No, no, no. no I, I, and he's accepted. He's accepted that he said them. What I'm saying to you is, don't, isn't, isn't Donald Trump saying, describing how he sexually assaulted a woman much more serious? Um, I think they should be treated with the same amount of disgust, frankly, because they're both as offensive. But then again, you don't have uh, Donald Trump <coughs> making violent comments about gay people. No, th I, I, I agree with you. They should be treated with the same level of disgust and, and, and it's you know deeply unimpressive on, on the part of both men. But somebody being vile verbally... I mean, it can it can tip over into illegality, but you know you could argue that it didn't in this instance with Jared O'Mara. But somebody being vile verbally, and uh, just with a view, somebody being vile verbally whilst describing a sexual assault they once perpetrated on a woman, one is more serious than the other. Well, there's no proof that Donald Trump has committed. He described sex. himself doing it. He said he would like to, which is equally as detestable. No, 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 he described what he did. He described what he did. I'm not sure what you regard as sexual assault, but he, I'm not going to use the words he used, but he described what he did. I think it, I just think the two aren't, aren't the same. But I feel that they're giving... I think they're both as detestable. I think what you're missing the point I... is that I feel that just because Donald Trump is on the right, uh, he is sort of strung up as being this absolutely morally reprehensible character, whereas um, Jared, he's young, he's on the left, 
and uh, it's almost as if an enabling mother saying, oh, it's just a mistake. He said it 15 years ago. Let's just forget about it. He said he's sorry. And, all that. and I think, um, and I do surprisingly agree with Owen Jones, is that he needs to show it's not worth just saying you're sorry. It, he needs to show... Um, needs to prove it. And try to make try to make up for his wrongdoing. Thank you for your call, Ruben. Ruben in Thanet. Carl in Portsmouth, hello. Hi there. You believe I'm being a hypocrite, why? Well, I just think it is typical of this um, leftist hypocrisy that's very much in, uh, <clears throat> evolving around social engineering. Well, hang on, is um, this me or, or leftist sorry, hypocrites? I, I, I'm not... Why, why are you lumping me in well, with so-called well, leftist hypocrites? <laughs> um, it's the, this social engineering side, and that's what you're very concerned with. And I'm just saying that you want to afford rights to everyone except the right to say whatever it is you don't like or whatever it is you feel a minority group won't like. Now, the thing is... Me? People are... Well, yes, that's what you've been surely defending all of this time. I've listened to your radio show many times and you do seem incredibly morally outraged by almost everything. <laughs> so I'm, just I'm not morally outraged by everything. I'm not even morally outraged by, by Jared O'Mara. I'm just... Un well, I'm, I'm unimpressed. Come, I'm unimpressed. Well, no, it's not. No, it's not that. You're much more than that because you constantly talk in absolutes. You say, that's disgusting. That's well, it is disgusting. disgusting. Have you seen but what he said? No, no, no. Have but you seen what... No, oh, come on. It's not... I'm listen. Not talking... Listen, I'm just before... On. All right, no. You know, you hang on a Go second, on. Carl. You've started okay. by saying I'm a hypocrite. You've started by saying yeah. I'm a leftist hypocrite, apparently. Yeah. Um, if you knew the full gamut of my views, you'd be much slower to describe me as a lefty. I love it every day when one minute I'm a lefty, the next minute I'm a Tory. I know you do. That doesn't mean you know me. That's where I've gathered... But that's... I don't think, yeah, but that's where I'm gathering your political opinions from, is what you're saying. Yeah. So you'll have to allow me a little bit of leeway here. All, all right. I'm trying to say is, is, all I'm trying to say is, is that you can't be morally outraged that everything everyone does, then demand everyone must have rights. All I know is this. I worked in gay bars, three of them, over ten years, and I'm, I'm, I'm a heterosexual male. What even is the LGBTQ community? Homosexual men, for the most part, hate lesbians. Trans people aren't even yes. Trans people Ooh, not aren't my experience. Second, well, mine and and I've got probably more than you because I worked in two, three gay bars for over ten years. So mm. My fair share, and um, transsexuals aren't even homosexual. Why are they being lumped in together? Because they're small minority groups that the left want to pile on top of each other so they can blame. Well, that's well, that's why they that's why they get their own letter in that list. Because what do you be, mean? Well, you, you said they're, they're not even gay. Well, I know they're not, and they know they're not, and just because it's LGBT, they're in the group of homosexual. No, come well, on. Well, maybe they face similar. Maybe they face gay. similar discriminations, similar misunderstandings. Right, or maybe they're just minorities that the left are grouping up and saying you're a minority, therefore you're a victim. Because trust me, I know many gay men that are conservatives. I know many gay men. So do I. Have you right? So who is it for people like Owen Smith to speak for the entire LGBT Jones. community? Owen and Jones. That's what people like him. Sorry, Owen Jones. That's what people like him do. They want to create any minority is relabeled mm, as a victim. I, but I, I, victim. Okay. I, I still want to challenge you on yep. the thing you said at the very beginning, um, not least because you said it about me. I, I can't okay. say exactly what... Jared Amara said. I can't say the words. I mean, I don't want sure. to say the words, but they are that bad. They are well, that bad. Now, oh, me, well, hang on, hang on. Let me finish the point sure, about the words. Okay, sure. If, if somebody wants to be really coarse, of course it's yeah. their right to be. Of course it's their yeah. right to be. If in the course of being coarse, they absolutely viciously attack verbally viciously attack particular groups because of their sex or because of their sexuality yeah. um, or because of their weight i am allowed they are allowed to say it i'm not saying they can't say it but i am allowed to say that their words are disgusting i'm allowed to be appalled by their words and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that i don't think they are allowed to say them it means no, that i don't fancy being represented by them in parliament that's yeah, very different yeah. 
Now, that's fair enough, but what you do also go on to say is, is again, how disgusting the language is and all it this is. stuff. It is. It's and incontrovertibly it's disgusting. It's not just I'm my not, view. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that, but you're using these absolutes with no context. Now, I'm not trying to defend... This. No, <laughs> the context on. is, I can't on, say the second. words are that bad. No, no, hang, hang on one second. I'm not trying to defend James. I'm just saying that everybody Jared. at some point if they, imagine someone's had a bad day their wife's just left them they've lost the car the, one of the kids has died or the cat or the dog's dead and and they just call someone a bloody language you know, but just don't even say it I, no no i didn't say it good well you said one of, yeah just no, contain no, it no, no, no. no you did oh, hang on you're getting more outraged again no, i'm not i'm just being i'm not i'm getting i'm getting no, off calm thoughts in my mind it's nothing to do with moral okay, outrage okay but what i'm trying to say is, is that it's okay for people to make or say things in, 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 in perhaps in heats and moments. Or, what are you going to do? Shut down everyone from using the, 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 the term, oh, that's beginning with G-A-Y. Yeah, I mean, you can't, more, you can't busybody control people in that I'm not way. suggesting that you can. I haven't for a second suggested that people can't say anything they want to say within the law. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, in fact, I'm not even saying it, I'm asking it. Should they be held responsible, particularly if they go on to become an MP, where they, I think, I, I do think a, a higher standard should exist in public life. I do think that it's not a lot to ask for a, a voter to think that when they put an X in a box, that they will be putting the X in the box of somebody who will be... A representative of them in some ways and, not, and by that I just mean a, basic decency. But do you not think there's a dishonesty here? One guy could be like the really coolest guy and say one bad thing and you guys will hang him for the rest of his career, yet one guy cannot say anything and be clever in public but yet use all those expletives behind your back. What have you proved? What have you done? Nothing. You're just allowing by force and by pressure. I'm not forcing anyone Carl, I'm people. asking I'm questions I'm about I'm whether I'm people I'm should be I'm held I'm to I'm account for something they said 15 years ago. Yeah, that's right. And if you want me to talk about the James thing directly, I would argue Jared. that it's his person, the Jared thing, it's his personality. If you look at, for example, the way when he was rejected by a girl, he then turned around and abused her. That is someone who has... Did he? Allegedly? Even... I think I'll leave it there with you, Carl, because I don't know that that's true. But thank you uh, very much for your call, Carl. Mm, I'm a leftist hypocrite. That's a, that's a first. 0345 973 the number to call to carry on this conversation. Should Jared O'Mara be held accountable, held to account, lose his job, essentially, for something he said 15 years ago, for which he has apologised? It is very nearly, I uh, know it is in fact now, 349.